All right, guys, here we go back in the hangar working again. I'm smiling because anybody that's done any of these videos knows that there's a blooper reel like that long. I have hit this freaking start button and stop button and delete button like nine times. And the part that I didn't tell you is I've also done this with an iPod or an iPhone. And I said, ah, I love it. iPhone's awesome. And yeah, I'm so old school. Android for me. Anyhow, so here's what I got. Uh, back in the hangar working again, like I said. Um, I've got this plane. It's almost done. I'm like 90% done. Airframe's done. I got the engine on. I got most of the wiring done, which means I'm 90% done and I still have 120% to go. I got a lot to do. Anyhow, um, last couple videos we showed a bunch of wiring. We showed some troubleshooting. So now where I'm at is I'm working on the starter for the system, or for this airplane. The airplane has a Lycoming 0235 on it. It's a heavy engine, you know, and I know I'm paying that penalty for that heavy engine, but I like the air cooled. I like that, I don't know, that airplane aspect of it. I'm not saying that the auto conversions aren't good because they've got some pretty cool stuff, you know, but again, I'm a little more old school. I like that Lycoming. So... I'm paying that penalty with that weight. So I started looking and where can I save weight on this airplane? Cause I don't want to throw a bunch of lead in the tail when I do my CG. So one of the things that I found was the original starter that I got with this engine was pretty tired. So I started looking at rebuilding it. And then I found uh, a SkyTech starter. SkyTech starter is a lightweight starter. And it was kind of cool because they're, I don't know if you know this or not, but they're expensive. So there's a place, and I think it's in Indiana, and I think it's called Flight Widgets. You can look it up, but uh, he remanufactures starters, and he does the uh, SkyTech. And I got a heck of a deal on it, and I was pretty happy with it. So I've got the SkyTech starter, which is just this cute little guy back in here, as you can see. Um, and then we have Old Reliable here. I mean, look at the difference in size of that starter. Huge difference. So I actually put it on the bathroom scale, and I found that I was actually looking at saving upwards of 11 pounds uh, going with the SkyTech starter. So I started looking at wiring it, and I keep getting this video stuck in my head, and it's that Kit Plane Enthusiast video of Mark Pennestadler. It's a picture of his RANs. And he had, he thinks, an electrical problem. And it burned. Awful. And I, that keeps popping in my head. And me being the guy that I am, I, I work in the, the uh, automotive industry and everything's fused. You know, I know you can't, you're not going to fuse your, your main uh, battery cable going up to the starter. But I was thinking about the coil wire. Do I want to fuse that? If that drops off, if, if it burns, it's just a layer of protection. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to see what that coil draws. Um, so how I was going to do that is I'm going to use a clamp-on amp meter. Clamp-on amp meter is pretty cool stuff. So what you do is you actually open it up, run the wire through it, and then what you'll do is you'll actually set it to amps. And then as I trigger that starter, it's going to show what the current draw is. And then I'm going to use that to determine what size fuse, what size wire I'm going to run, etc. You know, I did talk to the manufacturer, and he says he thought it would be somewhere around uh, 10 or 12 amps, but I'd like to test it and see. So that's what I'm going to do. So what I'll do now is I'll come over here, and right here is my starter wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that guy right there. I'm going to clamp it on there. And I'm going to set it right up there. And let's see if we can set it to where it doesn't get out of the way. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go trigger that starter. And we're going to see what kind of current draw we have. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. I am going to turn on my master. Now that I've got my master on, I'll make sure my ignition is off. And here is my electro air uh, switch. I really like this thing. It's kind of cool. You got your right and left uh, mags. I actually called them and talked to them about that. They didn't have a right and left mag switch, so they actually put this together for me, which was kind of cool. 
anyhow we've got a starter button there so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the camera out I'm gonna hold it to where we can see the clamp on amp meter I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna hit the starter button we're gonna see what we get two amps oh we got a little twist there let me go ahead and pull that back up see what we got there nice that's better so what else do we get three amps 3.5 amps so that seems a little light to me I expected to see a little bit more but call it three five call it four amps so I'll have to figure out how I want to fuse that so that number was a little bit weird I saw four amps basically now what could be happening is, is that meter might, might not keep up and it doesn't have the hold where it's going to grab that peak. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run a 10 gauge wire out there and I'm going to size, a 10 gauge wire should be around, good for around, I don't know, 30 amps, somewhere in that ballpark, 25, 30 amps. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll run that 10 gauge out and then I will put an inline fuse with a 20 amp fuse in it. And we'll see how that works out. Um, so the next thing I want to do is just give a little demonstration on some wiring technique. You know, YouTube is really helpful for a lot of people and some people may not know how to do some of these things. So I thought it might be helpful and all I'm going to do is show some crimping in the tools that I like to use. And if it helps, great. If not, well then you just wasted, you know, a minute and a half of your time. So. So as you start this process, the wiring process, you'll find that you've got a bunch of different tools that you can buy. Um, you know, you really do get what you pay for. So you can go with the cheapy type crimping pliers, the cheapy strippers and stuff like that. But as you're doing a ton of wiring, it really helps to have the good tools. You know, most people are used to something like this. You know, this is what you get at the hardware store. Will it work? Absolutely. Does it make your life a little more difficult? Absolutely. The tool does help you out quite a bit. So what I've got here is I've got a good pair of wire strippers. Uh, this is what I use at work. If you look here, it actually says the gauge of the wire right there. So I've got 10 gauge wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it in there. I'm going to pull and there's a strip. So then the next step is for me is I'm going to take a, a piece of heat shrink tube. I'm going to cut it to the length that I want. And then I'm going to take that heat shrink tube and I'm going to, let me drop these pliers here. I'm going to take that heat shrink tube and I'm going to slide it over. And then I'm going to take my ring terminal here. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to slide it on. And this is where it becomes a pain in the butt with the other pliers. Now you have to kind of hold it and take it and hold it in place and then try to find the spot and then take it and squeeze. Well, the nice part is if you buy a good pair of strip or a good pair of uh, crimping pliers like these guys here, it's pretty nice because what we can do at that point is number one, we've got a yellow end on the uh, crimp. Here you have yellow. So what you do is you take it, you slide it in, you start pulling, and you pull till you click. Once you pull till you click, now it's actually held in place. So now you just took one thing out of the equation, trying to hold it in the right spot. So then you take your wire, you push it in, you get it to where it's just protruding out, you give it a squeeze, and now you have the absolute perfect crimp. As you can see, I've got my uh, heat shrink tube here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and grab my heat gun. I've got a really small heat gun that I bought off of Amazon, paid like... 10 or 12 bucks for it. This is okay, it doesn't bother me very much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start shrinking this. And we're just gonna sit there and heat it up. And it will shrink up really nice and tidy. So here we go, turn that guy off. And there you have what I would consider the perfect crimp. So just a quick little, uh, you know, quick little lesson to help anybody who's getting started in the wiring thing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play because that's who I am. That's what I do. So time to play. As I said, we're going to play, right? And look what I did. You're not going to believe it. 
I left the master on. What's the matter with me? What about that battery? I'm going to turn that master off. Anyhow, like I said, time to play. Let's see what we do. All right, so I'm back in the airplane, and you know what? I'm going to do it. I can't help it. Do I know it's childish? I do know it's childish. Is it something I should do? Not really. It doesn't really matter, but I can't help myself because this is some cool stuff right now. So what I'm going to do is, number one, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn the master on. Oh, look at that red light. Nice, huh? So master's on. I am going to make sure that both of my mags are off on my electro air switch. So the mags are off. Everything's grounded out. You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to spin the fan that keeps the pilot cool. Watch this. So here's my push button here. And if everything I've done is right, that propeller should spin. All right, wait, let's see what we get. Oh. Did you see that? Oh, wait. Clear prop. I'm by myself. It's okay. Anyhow, I couldn't resist. I had to do it. Anyhow, so you know me, like I said, I'm not closed in any other way but my way. And you know what my way is? My way is with the bad, bad, bad joke. I can't help myself. So here's my bad joke to close this thing off. All right. So what's the difference between a golfer with a bad hit and a pilot with a bad landing? A golfer, you hear, whack, shit. And a pilot with a bad landing, you hear, shit, whack. <laughs> that was so stupid. I can't believe I did that. Anyways, watch this, guys. Look what I did. I left my master back on. So, I keep pushing this master thing, and here's the reason. My last airplane, if I left the master on, my hops was running. That was a problem. So, I had, you know, hours on my airplane, and hours were probably actually sitting with the master on. Anyhow, um, so we'll turn that master off, and uh, you guys have a good time, have a good night, and I'll see you on the next one. As you guys will see, there's a change of pace here. I'm not out in the hangar, and the reason is, is because it's the ADHD Experimental Aircraft Building Channel, which means I see something, I go, squirrel, 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 and I, I can't keep stuff straight. So what I need to say now is like this video if you like it. Subscribe. Hey, it'll be fun. Do it. Hit the buttons. It's awesome. Like it. You know, somebody didn't like one of my videos. What? Well, Really? Really? Somebody actually hit the thumbs down. How can you not like this guy? I'm pretty awesome. Just ask me. Thumbs down. Really? It had to be. It had to be my brother. He's the only guy who makes sense. I don't know who else would do it. Anyhow, like it, subscribe it. Thanks, guys.